Hi, folks. Uh, David here at theroadswetravel.ca. Today I have with me a great, a great guest. I, I'll, I'll introduce him as a guest from clear from Texas, Round Rock, Texas. It's my son, Matthew Armstrong. Welcome, Matthew. Yeah, thanks for having me. Matthew and his wife, lovely wife, Michelle, has been with us for, uh, I think, around 10 or 12 days, and it's been absolutely yeah. glorious. And uh, we had a wonderful announcement from Matthew. You might want to share, Matt. Yeah, we uh, got the family all together on, uh, was it past Sunday? And yeah. we had a get to announce that we're having a baby and expecting in February. Now, I'm going to be a grandfather again. Yep. But this time we got the Armstrong name to carry that on. So yeah. that's, this is really something special. That's right. Yeah. And while you were here, we, uh, we enjoyed two days ago. Uh, baptism of Leslie and I. Yeah, that was uh, awesome to be a part of, and it was special for me to to get to be a part of that and see that. And yeah, it was yeah. fun. And listen, thank you so much for uh, videotaping that. That's going to be a memory for a lifetime. Yeah, I think we that next morning when we watched it over, I think we were all a pretty big emotional mess that were watching you guys get baptized. It was, yeah. it was special. It was special. So you went to Texas about a year ago. Uh, no, uh, two and a half years ago would be two years ago this past March. My heavens, the time flies. Yeah, I know. You run a youth ministry here for two years. Yep. Before you went, you come back from Redding, California, under the Bill Johnson's ministry, started a youth ministry here, and it mm-hmm. was very successful, and, and you felt drawn to Texas. Yeah, well, I don't know if we felt drawn to Texas. I always <laughs> said I would never move to Texas, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I always said, even if God calls me, I will not move move to Texas, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so what, what encouraged you to move then? Uh, well, I had a friend of mine named uh, Chuck Marr, went to school with him. He's actually from St. John area, but he pastors a church in San Antonio. And uh, he called me up. He was driving through um, Austin area and said, and felt like the Lord put me on his heart uh, about this church that was that's down there. And, uh, you know, they're looking for a youth pastor at the time. So I just kind of, he told me where it is. I called him or he called me and he told me where it is. I'm like, oh my goodness, Texas. I'm like, well, I'll call the pastor just as a courteous, you know, to you kind of that's, I never told him that, but you know, that's, that's what I was thinking. I was already thinking no in my head. So anyways, we made the phone call and connected over FaceTime and immediately knew and they're like, this is where we're supposed to be you know, wow. in Austin. Isn't it wonderful how God puts people in our path to help direct us and guide us to certain things? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. So everything's going well there with your ministry? Yeah, it's amazing. We, we're we loving it. We have an amazing team. Our church is amazing and growing. You know, um, I think when we first moved there two years ago, we had about average of 250 to 300. And now we're, you know, pushing 450 to, to 500 some weekends. Wow. Yeah, and the uh, youth group's going great. It's going awesome. I have a, an amazing team that are just awesome to be with, awesome to run with and great with students. And, and yeah, so we have, you know, probably average, you know, 50 to 70 youth that come and that are part of every Wednesday night. And we just do all kinds of stuff. We actually just had our first, um, official youth camp that we hosted and ran ourselves. Usually we go with other youth groups, Mm -hmm. which has been amazing. And that's another thing that I always said I probably would never do because youth camps are so much work. (laughs) And uh, so, but last, uh, this past January, we were at a camp for just a pastor's uh, pastor's thing. It was about a hundred different pastors from different denominations at the meeting at this camp. And so while we were there, the Lord's like, you need to run your own youth camp this year. And I just put it on my heart so strong. I Mm -hmm. went back, talked to my team they're like yeah let's do it and so it was just an amazing time we've had this big youth camp and uh you know had 85 people there another youth group joined us and it was amazing just students just getting wrecked you know in the power of god and having encounters with jesus and you know worship times going on for you know a couple hours and just like just you know kids laying their whole life down for jesus so it's pretty awesome i love it when the holy spirit moves that way especially with our youth their foundation eh? yeah and i think typically we look at at youth and we're like, oh, you know, they don't really want Jesus. They just want to play on their phones or, you know, do whatever mm-hmm. they want to do and not have responsibility. But I've found that that's not the case. I've found that the case is 
they actually really want an encounter with Jesus. Mm -hmm. They just want to meet the real God, not a God of religion or in, you know, that just on a Sunday morning thing. Like when they really experience the real power and presence of God, like they're hungry. Like that's all they want. You know, like I, I, we even, we get some, uh, yeah, flack from our students because we play too much games. They just want to worship more, you know, (laughs) (laughs) I'm not kidding. It's, you know, it's like, well, they want authenticity and realness. Yeah. Uh, it's true. They're, they're searching for something. Yeah. Is that the same thing Jesus is searching for? They're searching for us. Yep. And uh, wow, it's, that's beautiful. And when you mentioned before about a lot of churches get together to share uh, like unity services, that is amazing. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the big things that really struck us when we first went down to interview and go connect with the people down in Austin um, with the church, the biggest thing that really struck us was the unity in Austin overall. Mm-hmm with all the different pastors. And I've never seen anything like this. Like uh, just in Renrock alone, you know, I think they meet once a month where they get together 40 different pastors, uh, senior pastors, and they wow. sometimes they bring their, you know, worship pastors, or the youth pastors. So I get to attend once in a while with my senior leader. And uh, I mean, here's 40 different churches in just Round Rock and Round Rock's only, I think 250,000 or something. And they just connect together, they fellowship together, they have a meal together, they pray together, they lift up other pastors, pray for them. And these are all, this is not one denomination. This is, this is like Baptist, Southern Baptist, you know, Pentecostal, charismatic, like these are all people getting together and they're just, and they're really, there's a real heart of unity. Like I've never seen before. Mm. Um, And I think you know, that is some of the reasons why we're seeing such amazing growth in our region in general, uh, in the church, in our region in Austin. So it's really cool to see. Yeah, I know when I was, last time I was down to Reading uh, Supernatural School of Ministry yeah. in Bethel, the, I know they were opening up a church in Austin. Yeah. One of their first church implants. Mm-hmm. And they were welcomed by hundreds yeah. of different church organizations yeah. and churches mm-hmm. and actually given a building. Yeah. I mean, that is so powerful. I mean, that is that is what we call unity and trying to serve one God. Yeah. So Yeah. So I think that the church that they're in right now, um, it's owned by another church that's letting them use it on a Saturday. So I mean, that's pretty, a Friday and Saturday night, I think they're, they're allowed to use it. So that's pretty amazing to see, you know, oh, not yeah. being threatened by that. And, and we're, we actually work pretty closely with the Bethel Austin church. And uh, when they first came in to get ready to plant, it's actually Joaquin, who I'm familiar with. And I did some, I, I worked with him. Uh, Joaquin's a senior pastor at Bethel Austin. So I did some work with him in Reading when I lived there in the healing rooms and so you know i know him and some much of his team actually so um but it's really cool when they came uh, our church kind of had them in and and our we really try to host them really well and uh, you know try to get them connected with other senior leaders in the city and you know just blessing them and wanting to see them really prosper uh so we had them in this church service and just wanted to bless that their team so we had all their team come up front and wanted to pray over them and just release you know blessing and favor over them and so after we did that we kind of like blessed them in the region and then our senior pastor Richard Nash came up and said hey and this is unprecedented you do I don't think I've ever seen a senior leader do this at all uh he comes up to the front and he and genuinely like really this is like he really meant this from his heart said hey we love these guys Bethel Austin so much and and listen, if, if you attend True Life and you really feel like you're supposed to be a part of this church plant in Bethel Austin, we just want to let you know we bless you. If you're a part of our True Life church, we bless you just to go and run with them and oh, plant. Wow. I mean, like when that's have, amazing. Have you ever heard of a pastor saying you can leave my church and yeah. go to another church and we bless you? <laughs> yeah, well, that's really serving God. Yeah, it's not serving the church. Exactly. Serving God. It's a, it's yeah. the big C church. It's not. Um, you know, we're, we're all part of it together. Yeah, we have different styles and different looks. And, you know, we might, you know, believe some different things in certain small areas. But the absolute is that, you know, Jesus died on the cross and he rose again for us, for the gospel to give us grace that we can never have on our own. So, I mean, if we can all just agree there, let's, let's just stick with that. And, then, uh, you know, everything else, you know, we don't need to have a conversation about. We already know we disagree on it. So let's... <laughs> Wow, that is that yeah. is uh, that's a good foundation to yeah. uh, to plant the seeds under. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think that's what promotes unity.
unity, you know, and mm-hmm. and it's like, hey, let's just agree that Jesus, you know, Jesus did what he did on the cross, and you know, we're not in competition, yeah. you know, with other churches. We're not. Um, there's no need to have competition. We just get to love each other, and we're all working for the big C church. That's what yeah. our senior leader loves to talk about. It's the big C church, and yeah, I think that's pretty special. So that is special. Uh, anyways, you're also buying a house down there, getting ready to move in a new home when you get back. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. We're first homeowners, so we'll be moving in, and I think we close in like 15 days or something. So it's uh, it's kind of wild. A little. Um, this is something we've really been asking for for a while, and uh, yeah, it's kind of cool because. You know, last year, 2017, we, you know, really tried to get a house and put in a bunch of offers. We've seen tons and tons of homes and, you know, always got outbid. The the real estate market's really aggressive down there. So we always got like extremely outbid or someone had a cash offer. Mm. And uh, we're like, man, God. And so we kind of like were forced to, to sign our lease again on our apartment. And so we signed again for until August of this year, 2018. So our lease was running out in August uh, 2018. So a couple months ago, I was like, man, we should just, you know, we should just see, let's just try this again, you know, and just see what happens. So I uh, called a realtor and he said, hey, you know, we're potentially might be thinking about, you know, thinking about buying again. And, you know, she's a Christian lady and she's like, okay, let me, I have an idea. I, you know, let me call you back. So she calls us back and says, hey, there's a home that I want you to look at. It's a brand new build. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they're building and they have a, there's a home that will be finished at the beginning of September, end of August. So I was like, well, I don't know if I want to have a new build. And, but we went next day, looked at it and we're like, oh, this is it. This is perfect. <laughs> this is exactly what we wanted and put money down the next day. And it's been just really easy, smooth sailing. And, uh, and then a couple weeks later, Later, I actually found out I was on Father's Day that I found out that I was going to be a dad. So it was just a couple of really big things that happened in series. And, and then my wife, Michelle, got a promotion. And so it's like three big major life uh, changes, you know, all happened really quickly just from like stepping out in faith and just saying, okay, God, like I know you want us to have a home. I know you want us, you know, like let's just try. I'm just, I'm just going to have a little bit of faith here and believe that you want to do something special. And mm-hmm. and that's what's happened through this whole process. It's well, he, pretty cool. He, yeah. He he laid that out easily for you. Yeah. Yeah. Everything was, he, he had the house chose yeah. back two years ago. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's been the, it's been the easiest transition to like, it, nothing's been hard. Like last year when we were trying, like, I, I kind of believe in this, like, Hey, it's green light till it's red light thing. You know, it's yeah. like, it's always a green light for God, for me, when I make choices and then until I find a red light and then it's like, okay, well maybe this isn't the right direction. And last year when we were looking for a home, it was like, we were just going for it, but it was just so hard and trying to find it. And this year has just been totally different. It's just been so easy. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just been pretty neat. Yeah. Meant to be, my God. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's so nice to have you here. And uh, and I'm taking you to Bangor in probably in about a half an hour. Yep, Catch you your are. flight and you're, and you're heading off to Texas. Yep. And, and it's been nice to, for Michelle to be down close to her folks, too. Yeah. Yeah. We're about three hours from Houston where her family lives. So uh, I'm sure now that we have a house instead of a one-bedroom apartment, they'll be over much more to, to visit. Yeah. And see the baby in, in February, which I hope you guys come down. <laughs> well, and... we're, we're coming down for sure. We, have, we <laughs> won't have an excuse now not yeah, to come yeah that's right maybe not in the dead of heat in the summer but maybe spring <laughs> <laughs> well i just want to pray uh god's favor over you and i want to pray great great blessings god's blessings over you and and your church and your leadership and bubble protection while you're traveling and uh I just pray that this pregnancy is going to go so smooth and everything is going to be so great and moving into your home is going to be just absolutely fabulous. And mm. yeah. Do you want to say a couple words, Matt? Yeah. I just, I just pray for you, you know, dad, that, you know, God would just begin to touch you more and Leslie and even through this podcast that people will be touched. And, you know, if you're listening and, and you just need encouragement today, we just release encouragement over you and hope that, you know, you'd be a person of hope and filled with life mm. and uh, in Jesus name. Yes. Thank you, Matt. And listen, folks, thanks for listening. And may this, uh, this podcast have a tremendous impact on you and blessings on your weekend. Amen.